with this, the Bentley Continental GT. It's not my cup of tea, if I'm honest, uh, but if you live in Cheshire and you have to travel great distances at high speed in drinks globe luxury, it really is in a class of one. <laughs> but there are some drawbacks. If that pulled up outside your house, you'd think, oh no, a drug dealer is here. And then there are some of the details. I mean, the radiator grill, for example, looks like the sort of towel rail that would be bought by the left back for Cheshire United. Then you've got this black stuff here around the bottom of the window. I know why they've done it, to cover up the fact the dashboard's been raised, but it's ugly. And so are the side skirts. <laughs> it is well, but it's completely academic because you never see one of those in the real world. Oh, you, oh, do. you do, you do. You go to Cheshire, they're everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, always being driven by those women that have got faces actually made from leather. <laughs> but whenever I see them, those women driving those cars, I really do want to stop them and just ask. I want to beg. Why? Tell me why did you buy that? Because it's an expensive car. It's got an 825 watt stereo in it. What? Uh, That's more than Motorhead. A lot more. 17 <laughs> speakers. And I'm sorry, but that front end is hideous. I don't know why they don't have just done with that car and just call it the Wilmslow. <laughs> the day is coming when they fit that with fake pillars on either side of the door, I'm warning you. <laughs> now. The new XFR doesn't look much like a blistering, growling monster. There are no bulges in its flanks. There are no scoops. There's no Cheshireishness at all. It looks like it might even be a diesel. Out of the services, it was time for another jam. And guess what was at the other end of it? Cheshire. I'm not sure that the Jag will play well here. I don't think its bonnet is onyx enough. It even stops properly because it has the biggest brakes ever fitted to any car. And it's a handsome brute as well. Even though it was styled by a Belgian, it'll look good parked between the pillars of a footballer's Cheshire mansion. This is such a well thought out car. You needn't even worry about your Wilmslow weave coming off because if you push this button here, the rollover bar pops up and in the middle of it, there's a wind deflector. Keep your Presbury perm in place. Your Hazelmere highlights. You can have the most expensive hairdo in the world. Anyway, we must now find out how fast the Wilmslow Express goes around our track and that of course means handing it over to our tame racing driver. And we've also said this kind of thing, Red Bend. I love that. Show it to me. <laughs> How do you feel now? I may have accidentally said in the past it was a Cheshire footballer's car, that. But it is. Well, that's cool. But it's fabulous. Golf. Four years of your cool ball has just been destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> I think really Rolls-Royce's only hope with that new car is they're going to have to hope they can find a lot of very rich people with absolutely no taste. That's the only chance they got. Well, where are they going to find people like that, I wonder? Well, well there's Cheshire. Yeah. Dubai. Solihull, Monaco, Moscow. Beverly Hills. Yeah. They're going to sell millions of them. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Massive hit. Now, but actually, Altrincham, I've got a list here of where they're being sold, OK? And Altrincham, which is a sort of footballer's wives suburb in Cheshire, they've sold more there than they have in Loughborough, Luton, Manchester, Medway, Middlesbrough, Midlothian, Milton Keynes, Newcastle, Newport, Normanton, North Dorset and North East Bedfordshire put together. <laughs> and then there's Guildford. If you take Surrey and Cheshire out of the equation, they won't have sold one. <laughs> you also got uh, turbo razors, do you remember Tur this? Turbo aftershave. Did you? Yeah, yes, tur well, I didn't, because I don't wear aftershave, because I'm not from Cheshire. But, um... <laughs> Wait a minute. What? I thought you were bringing that new thing they're making in Cheshire. What, the BAC Mono? Yes. It broke down. Where did it break down? In the factory. Oh, OK. <laughs> have, you got, yeah. have you got two <laughs> fake stone lions on either side of the gate? Yeah, I'd like them as well. <laughs> This is my big fat gypsy wedding being played out. <laughs> <laughs> right here, right What's now. What's going on? And there's the car. <laughs> the only way is Cheshire. There you go. 
Oh, now, moving it along. A friend of mine has a website, okay, it has an orange backdrop. Now, in various offices and workplaces that have this porn filter on the internet, okay, orange is picked up as a skin tone, which, of course, it is in Cheshire, yeah? <laughs> it's picked up in N, so it will just see that as a naked lady with a sort of vajazzle in the shape of a Renault badge. <laughs> And it won't let anyone see it. So Mr Cameron's porn filter is just going to stop us looking at things that are orange. Yeah, David Dickinson's had it. He's gone. <laughs> Basically, this car was only bought by two types of people. Footballers and people who are married to footballers. And the sports stamping ground is this place. The Premier League ghetto of Wilmslow in Cheshire. Mind you, some of the features on this new model are not so good. These days, the grill is way too Cheshire, and even the gills now have their own annoying styling details. A few years ago, um, bosses at a Cheshire-based engineering company called BAC decided they'd like to make a car. Now, because they're from Cheshire, I assumed it would be made from onyx and have bullseye glass in the windows and then door mirrors made out of Wayne Rooney's ears. <laughs> but no. They decided it should have the four-cylinder engine from a Ford People van, the gearbox from a Formula 3 racing car, and that it should be upholstered in the same stain-resistant and waterproof material that they used to line furniture in old people's homes. <laughs> and then they turned their attention to how it should look. Uh, now, most car designers, for their inspiration, go to big cats and bats and jet fighters, but the men from Cheshire decided they didn't want any of that. And it's not just the detailing that's beautiful either. When you stand back, that's one of the most exciting shapes they've ever seen. The mono is the nicest thing to come out of Cheshire since the cheese. That's, a, and that's how many? 13 and a half? 30, it's actually 13.6 litres, 1,000 horsepower. So, that's, what will it take for them to actually put this into production? Well, I reckon those people I mentioned in the film, like, you know... Oh, Elton and... Elton and Bex Posh and, Bex and, Posh, and you yeah. and Stuart Hall. If Stuart they, Hall? Stuart Hall. You, you ring up Cadillac, whatever their number is, and say, make that car. So, Stuart, if you're watching tonight, do that. You'll be the talk of Cheshire. <laughs> now look what they've done to it. Look at this. Honest, this is the God, new one. What is it? How much bling can you get on the front? It's all these fiddly headlamps and all this business going on. I'm what surprised it doesn't have studs in its ears. Here. <laughs> they have literally ruined it. Now, listen, I am aware, of course, that there is a demand for a car that looks like this, because I know there is such a place as Cheshire. And I don't mind if they make this Range Rover Rooney edition. I could just call it the Range Rooney. The Wayne Wover. The Wayne Wover. <laughs> These are good names. These are good names. But all I'm asking is, please, can everybody else, ordinary decent people, have the old one back? Please. Actually, I, I have to say I agree with you. There needs to be a version of the new Range Rover that isn't for people who want to celebrate the life and work of a potato-faced shopping enthusiast. <laughs> <laughs> we want the old one back, we really do. We do. Oh, now.